Welcome, 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 my brothers and sisters. I am Elder Derek Strickland, and I'm so glad that you're here on the first ever Bible Lessons and Prayers podcast, where we're going to be talking about some different subjects, right? Not just the prayer and um, Bible band book, but these are just uh, different messages, different subjects that I want to talk about that's been on my heart, and I decided to do it in a podcast setting. So I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that has been a spiritual stumbling block for many believers in churches around the world. We want to talk about the unintentional effects of legalism in church, mean, meaning this legalism in church uh, uh, um, was done not necessarily intentional, but it was uh, gets brought about because this is just what we knew. This is what was taught. All right. Um, so the unintentional effect of legalism in the church and our anchor scripture today is going to be found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23 and 24. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matter of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a net and swallow a camel. My brothers and sisters, Jesus himself called out the religious leaders of his time for their legalism, highlighting their obsession with the um, the, the minute, minute of the law, like the smaller matters of the law, while ignoring the heart of it. And I say unto you, uh, my brothers and sisters, that in the same tendency still hunt the modern church. The first intended effect of legalism is... Um, it obscures the grace of God. Paul the Apostle writes in Galatians 2 and 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. When we start to believe that our righteousness comes from the ability to follow a set of rules, we render the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross unnecessary in our lives. The truth is, none of us are capable of perfection. But by grace that we are saved, not our works. Our second point today is legalism creates division among believers. Let me say that one more time. Legalism creates division among believers. How many churches have been split over issues like what kind of music is appropriate for worship? How one should dress for Sunday service or whether one can drink wine or not. Romans 14 and 1 admonishes us, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful dispensation. Uh, we, are, we are to be united in the essential doctrine of the faith, not divided by our human traditions. My third point is the uh, unintentional effect of legalism is that it breeds hypocrisy, right? And self-righteousness. Like the Pharisees who love to pray in public places just to be seen, we too run the risk of becoming more concerned about appearing holy than being holy. Matthew 6 and 1 warns us, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. This is a big one. We want to be careful how we do that, all right? And lastly but not least, legalism can make us judgmental and unloving. John 13, 34 and 35 reminds us, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love, if if ye have love one another, love should be our defining trait, not legalism. So how do we break free, right? Um, how do we break free from this? By returning to the cross, as Paul said in Galatians five and one, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We must repent and and refocus our relationship with Jesus Christ. We must embrace grace and extend the same grace to others. My God, my God, listen, let, let me just say a quick word of prayer and we're going to close this uh, podcast off, right? 
Uh, Father, help us to discern between your holy commandments and holy traditions. Teach us to extend grace as you have given it to us. And may our actions reflect love above all else. In the name of Jesus, thank God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if this message has convicted you, know you that you are not alone. We are all a work in progress, all in need of God's grace. And as we navigate this journey, let us also do it with love and humility, always extending the hand to help our brother and sister up, not a finger to push them down. May the peace of may the peace and grace of God be with you all. As always, I am Elder Derek Strickland. It's my wish for you that you all be blessed. Then go out there and be a blessing. See you guys on the next podcast. Peace.